In a world of celebrity endorsements, you cannot get a bigger name loving your brand than Churchill. You have to go back about a hundred years to when Churchill first discovered this champagne. And uh, in 1908, he started drinking away, um, and he's quite a famous tippler, of course. And 20 years later, the British ambassador to France introduced him to Odette Paul Roger, the owner of Paul Roger. And he was very taken with her. So much so, they had regular lunches and drank a hell of a lot of Paul Roger. Um, he became such a fan that she named a wine after him. So the top cuvee of Paul Roger champagne is called Winston Churchill. And in fact, she sent him a case of champagne every single year as a thank you for promoting her brand. Um, sadly, when Churchill died, they actually stuck a black border around the label of Paul Roger in memory of him. So that's the ancient history, um, and that's how we all came to know the brand. Um, today, the standards of Paul Roger are just as high as they were 100 years ago, and um, the wonderful thing is that they've never really changed in size. They make about a million and a half bottles of champagne a year, which is tiny by comparison to some of the big brands. Um, if you think that Don Perignon, for example, makes a million and a half bottles on its own. Um, and Paul Roger is famous for its non-vintage, which is unbelievably high quality, never very expensive. Um, I particularly like the vintage that they make. Um, the 2002 that was released a few years ago was sublime, and because of the tiny production it sold out uh, within a few months, the 2004 that subsequently been, been released is is mind-blowing as well. They're very elegant wines, they're very demure, very sophisticated wines. Um, and I think that's why Paul, uh, Paul Roger was such a, a fated champagne by um, Sir Winston Churchill. So um, following his footsteps, he's a very good role model, as you will know, and uh, taste Paul Roger.